Hi everyone! In this video, I'll talk about my internship and job seeking experience as I was doing my master's degree at Penn. My master's degree was called Master's in Computer and Information Technology or MCIT. It's a program for people who don't have a computer science or technical background and are transitioning into computer science. If you haven't already, check out the playlist, which I'll link above, that has more MCIT related videos and information. Please make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notifications. All right, so let's begin this video. So buckle your seatbelt is going to be a wild ride. Let's start from the very beginning. First week of MCIT. I just arrived in Philadelphia, not really familiar with the place and courses just started. And in that first week, there was a huge career fair. There was a lot of tech companies, especially. So I came in, looked around and thought about all the different companies that I could talk to and just thinking about how much more I can do now, now that I will have a CS degree, probably have a lot more internship opportunities. Fast forward a couple weeks and I thought I was doing okay, right? Then I got my first midterm back and I failed 592, my probability test. I'm not the best student. But I've also never actually failed a test for midterm before. So this was definitely a first for me. And I was very, very stressed out about this. I, I got like 54%, I think. Yeah, and that was the lowest score I've ever gotten. And, you know, that definitely <laughs> set me into panic mode and, you know, really stopped thinking about like internships, career fairs, and just thought about I need to pass these classes. That pretty much set the tone of that first semester. It felt like I was drinking from a fire hose, like with all that information coming in, doing assignments, preparing for midterms. Yeah, that was, it was just so much to take in. And it was a semester that was full of self-doubt. I thought that maybe I should stop trying to do CS, go and try to be a doctor again, which is what I was doing before. Not that being a doctor is any easier, but I just felt like I couldn't do CS anymore. And this is when I just started. And early November rolled around. And this is when somebody came up to me and went like, hey, Tina, how many lead codes did you do? For those of you who don't know, lead code is a website that has a really large collection of software engineering interview questions. And it's pretty much like a ritual for all software engineers to go and practice these questions before starting interviewing for both their internships as well as full-time jobs. So you see, I didn't actually know what lead code was. And since that person was asking me that question, that meant that person not only assumed that I was applying for internships, that I was actually preparing for internships. Well, I hadn't even thought about internships at that point. So I was like, oh God, you know, I should probably think about internships now. I applied to a bunch of things online and the good thing about have, doing a CS degree and applying for software engineering is that you don't actually have to write a cover letter. So you just like cast out a huge net of applications and see like who respond to you. And the first wave that was closing up were the banks. So I applied to all of the banks that I could find online and two of them got back to me. The first one was Goldman Sachs and the second one was Capital One. The Capital One process started off with them sending me something and pretty much going like, hey, are you a US citizen? And I was like, no, I'm not a US citizen. And they just never responded to me again. So I guess they were only looking for US citizens. The Goldman Sachs one was in late November and they sent me an online screening test where they had a few coding questions that you had to complete. I still hadn't done any lead code at that time. But I did go on glass doors and just look at like all the questions that apparently they do ask. And thankfully, I found some of the questions uh, that they actually asked me for that round. So I was somehow able to pass. Then around December, they sent me a second round, which was a behavioral interview. They sent you a few behavioral questions and you had to talk on video and you just had to answer them. So pro tip for that, if a company ever asks you, will you ever lie? Will you ever cheat? Will you do something that's illegal or bad? The answer is no. So, you know, they're like, did you, if something were to happen and you can't finish your job, would you try to take a shortcut? No. If, uh, if anybody asks you if you can help them out with something that's confidential, then what would you say? No. You know, like that. That is apparently what they were looking for. So I was able to go on to the next round. They scheduled that final round where I had to go on site sometime after winter break. So winter break was in December and I was supposed to go in around 
January. Going into winter break, I plan to like, you know, really do lead code and study and read Cracking the Coding interview, which is like the Bible of Cracking the Coding interview. Uh, but none of that actually happened because I was honestly just so burnt out from that first semester, keeping up with classes and just like learning everything. that I just really needed those few weeks to rest. So I think I did like one lead code and a few pages of cracking a coding interview and that was about it. So then when I was actually supposed to go interview, I was like so terrified because I didn't do any of the prep that I was supposed to do and I felt like I didn't actually know anything at all. When I came back to campus, after a week or so, I then went to New York from Philadelphia where I did my final round. The format was two interviews back to back and each interview had two interviewers where they would ask you questions. So <laughs> I'm not even kidding. For three of the interview questions, um, I literally didn't even know what they were talking about at that time because I didn't learn algorithms or data structures yet. So they were like, oh, like you have this linked list, like how would you, you know, do some things with it? And I was just like, well, what's a linked list? For that final interview, I think I got along pretty well with the interviewer and we kind of had a chat about my startup experiences. And he asked me a string manipulation question, which is something that I actually did know how to do. And I was able to do that one fine. After finishing that interview, I was pretty sure that I didn't get that job because I essentially failed three of the four interviews and the fourth one was just so happened that he asked me a pretty simple question and I just had a conversation with the interviewer at that time and I didn't hear back for two months. During that time I was still in school and I was started all the classes for my second semester and I was just like applied to more things randomly like basically like whatever there was I just like you know click submit handed in my resume and didn't really think that much about it after. Then after a month or so, I got an interview invite from Blackstone, which is another financial institute in New York. This was also a virtual interview, but by this time I had already learned some algorithms as well as data structures, and I was able to pass that virtual round fine. They told me to go on site for my final round, so I took the Amtrak, went to New York again, and um, that was a that was a complete disaster. They asked me something about like how do you code an elevator, and I was just like, I don't know how how would you code it code an elevator. So that that didn't go really well, and I like for sure knew that I didn't get Blackstone. And then I came back, you know, still doing school, also applied just randomly to more things. I, I applied to so many things, like hundreds of different applications I sent out, and then. So after two months of not hearing anything at all, I got that offer from Goldman Sachs. I was like, so, so grateful that I was able to get it. Since I got that offer, I didn't apply to more things, but remember how I said that I was applying to so many things before? I then got an interview invite for Amazon, and this was also the first virtual round. So I figured like, might as well just give it a go, right? So I did the first round and I managed to pass that. Thankfully, I was learning about uh, like all the things that they were actually testing us on for the interviews at that time. This was in March of 2019. And except for what we were learning in school, I actually didn't touch lead code at all. Amazon only has two rounds. So first they do that virtual screening round and then they go and just do that final round also online. This one would be like video with one of the employees at Amazon. For my final round, the interview asked me six questions. The first three of them were really easy questions that you could have done without actually taking algorithms or data structures. For question four and five, I was actually just really, really lucky. They were connected and those two questions were exactly what were in my um, algorithms homework that week. So because of that, I was able to get those questions right. And for the last question, I like literally had no idea how to do it. And I think I just like made something up. Apparently that was good enough to get through and I also got an offer for Amazon. In case you're interested, click the video above which will go into more detail about how I chose between my internship offer from Amazon and the one from Goldman Sachs. So long story short, I chose Goldman Sachs and I did my internship at Goldman Sachs because they let me do stuff that was more data science related, which is what I was more interested in. 